Hi, I'm Erin Gordon, one of the CPMC Genetic Counselors. Before you view your results, I want to give you some important information about what the results can and cannot tell you. When viewing your results for any condition, it's important to remember that the testing done as part of the CPMC study only looks at disease risk. CPMC test results are not a medical diagnosis. Diabetes occurs when the body does not make insulin or when the body is not able to use insulin. Insulin is a hormone made by the pancreas. The body uses insulin to make energy for your cells from the foods that you eat. There are two main types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, also known as juvenile or early onset diabetes, occurs when the body does not make insulin. Although type 1 diabetes is most often diagnosed in children and young adults, it can develop at any age. In fact, approximately 37% of people with type 1 diabetes are diagnosed in adulthood. Type 2 diabetes, or adult onset diabetes, occurs when the body is not able to use insulin. It is more common in adults than children. Type 2 diabetes is more common than type 1 diabetes. Only about 7% of people diagnosed with diabetes in adulthood have type 1, while the remaining 93% have type 2 diabetes. The focus of this presentation is type 1 diabetes and the CPMC results for type 1 diabetes. For more information on type 2 diabetes, please see the type 2 diabetes educational page and video accessible from the CPMC health conditions page. Symptoms of type 1 diabetes include extreme thirst, extreme hunger, even after eating, dry mouth, frequent urination, fatigue, blurry vision, nausea, and weight loss. The exact cause of type 1 diabetes is unknown. However, family history, genetic variants, and Caucasian race are all known risk factors. Exposure to certain viruses may also play a role in the risk for type 1 diabetes. Since the cause of type 1 diabetes is unknown, it cannot be prevented at this time. Type 1 diabetes must be diagnosed by a physician. Usually, blood tests that look for sugar levels in the blood are used to diagnose type 1 diabetes. Although not diagnostic, testing for genetic variants that have been associated with type 1 diabetes can be used to help estimate the risk. Although type 1 diabetes cannot be prevented, serious complications of type 1 diabetes can be. One of the most important steps to prevent complications of type 1 diabetes is getting an early diagnosis and treatment. Other steps to prevent complications of type 1 diabetes include careful monitoring and control of blood sugar, eating a healthy diet, getting regular exercise, and adjusting for activities that can affect blood sugar, like drinking alcohol, stress, illness, other medications, exercise, and hormones. We mentioned genetic risk factors as contributing to the risk of type 1 diabetes. It's estimated that about 88% of the risk of type 1 diabetes in the Caucasian population is due to differences in genetic factors, while the remaining 12% of the risk is due to differences in non-genetic factors. There are many genetic variants that have been associated with type 1 diabetes. Some increase risk, while others are protective genetic factors that actually decrease the risk. It is not clear yet how to combine multiple genetic factors to come up with one succinct risk score. As a result, we have chosen just one genetic variant to tell you about as part of your participation in the CPMC. Now let's talk specifically about the CPMC results and genetic risk for type 1 diabetes. Remember that we all have two copies of every gene. We inherit one copy from our mother and one copy from our father. This means that for every genetic variant the CPMC study looks at, you can have either zero, one, or two copies. Your CPMC results will tell you how many copies of this one protective genetic variant you have. Some genetic variants are associated with an increased risk of disease. These are called risk variants. Some genetic variants are associated with a decreased risk of disease. These are called protective variants. The genetic variant the CPMC looked at for type 1 diabetes is a protective variant. 
Type 1 diabetes results are the first to tell you about a protective variant. Having one or two copies of a protective genetic variant decreases your risk of type 1 diabetes compared to individuals who have two copies of the non-protective genetic variant. Having one or two copies of a non-protective genetic variant increases your risk of type 1 diabetes compared to individuals who have two copies of the protective genetic variant. Remember that type 1 diabetes is a complex disease, which means that it's caused by a combination of variants in multiple genes and the environment. No single genetic variant causes type 1 diabetes. No single genetic variant will completely predict your risk of type 1 diabetes. Results of CPMC testing alone do not diagnose type 1 diabetes or rule out the chance of developing type 1 diabetes in the future. Genetic variant information can help you estimate your risk of type 1 diabetes. However, other risk factors, like your family history and exposure to viruses, may have a greater impact on your risk than any individual genetic variant. We may learn of other genetic variants that influence your risk of type 1 diabetes in the future. As we learn more, your estimated genetic risk for type 1 diabetes may change. We'll keep you updated on changes through the CPMC web portal. For more information, consider sharing your CPMC results with your healthcare provider. You can also contact a CPMC genetic counselor, read information on the CPMC health condition page, or attend a CPMC educational event.